In restoring this Shimano Kitty Hawk, we noticed when it was in the small chain ring in the front and the small cog in the back, the chain actually hit the upper guide pulley, indicating that the chain is too long. So whoever put on this chain on this bicycle did not properly size it. We'll use a standard technique used by most bike shops. Let's take a look. Shift to the largest chain ring in the front and make sure that you're shifted to the smallest cog of your cassette to get that rear derailleur out of the way. As opposed to what Calvin Jones says in his Park Tool video, take the end that has just inner links and we're going to feed that forward over the rear cog, the largest cog, bypassing the rear derailleur and feed it onto the large chain ring and pull it around till it's at about the four or five o'clock position. Make sure it's on the large chain ring bypassing the rear derailleur. Hold the chain taut on both sides. Insert your master link into the side that has the inner plates. I have this fastened here for demonstration purposes, but you're going to have to hold this tight and pull it around to see where the master link comes out. Uh, this is, if you try to do it the way Calvin Jones does, try to put this into the outer plate, uh, this may get stuck in the outer plate and give you problems. Much better to do it this way. So we stick this in, we're holding this tight, we're looking over here, while we're holding it, we're noticing that the outer plate is meeting another outer plate. We can't join two outer plates. But if we go down one, we'll have an, and remove that rivet, we'd have an inner plate and the master link outer plate, we'd be able to join them. This we'll call a reference point to make enough slack to run through our derailleur. We'll count down one, two, and this will be the point that we'll go ahead and mark to remove the rivet. In this particular case, we install the outer plate of the master link. We notice that the outer plate, if we took this rivet out, would meet an inner plate. This would be fine. This we'll call a reference point. To give us enough slack, we'll count down one, two rivets, and this is the particular rivet that we'll remove. Let's go ahead and remove the marked rivet. Remember we had left the front derailleur over the largest chain ring. We'll go ahead and feed the chain through. And then we're going to pick up the chain and begin shifting to the small chain ring and place the chain on the small chain ring. In the back, remember we had shifted to the smallest cog. We'll now feed the chain into the derailleur. We'll first go over the guide pulley and under the retainer and over the tension pulley 
below the retainer. Now we can bring the chain together. With our chain hook in place, we'll take our master link, some people call it quick link, we'll put a drop of oil, light lubricant, on the links. We'll see if they have any direction. They don't. So it really doesn't matter how we put these in. And then we're going to insert them on both sides and pull them out and we'll check both sides that both rivets are pulled all the way to the end. Remove our chain hook and take a look and see how we've done. We can see now with the chain in the smallest chain ring and let's make sure we're in the smallest cassette we no longer get rubbing of the chain against the guide pulley. Let's check the other way around. That is the largest chain ring and the largest cassette cog. Shift it to the largest chain ring. And the largest cog in the back, we notice that we don't have stretching. That is, there's still a slight bend in the rear derailleur. If you accidentally shift into the large chain ring and large cog, a chain that's too short, the derailleur will be almost parallel to the chain and may jam in this position when you shift. A chain that's properly sized, again, if you accidentally shift into the large chain ring, large cog, a combination we don't usually use, there should be about a 45 degree angle in the rear derailleur in this position to keep it from jamming when shifting. This works for sizing most chains, but there are some exceptions, especially mountain bikes, as pointed out in the upper left hand corner by Calvin Jones. Also, if you're dealing with a shadow derailleur which has a built-in hanger extension allowing you to use larger cogs in the rear cassette you'll need a longer chain and the chain should be one full link that's an outer and inner plate longer than you would normally cut it. Do you use other methods to size the chain when you don't have an old one to measure against? If so please comment below. Also subscribe to keep up with our latest videos. This is Tony of Tony 10 Speed Safe Cycling.